So in practice, I've already choked twice looking at this film, and it just never goes old for me. So 13 years later, is the gold getting a bit old for you, Abhinav? How has the sport moved? I know it's a sweeping question. Well, the very fact that you're opening the India Today conclave with a session on Olympic sport uh, tells me that we've made progress. The, <laughs> <laughs> the very fact that you've invited me back for something I did 13 summers ago tells me our progress has been slow, at least for my liking. Um, but having said that, I think uh, there has been a great evolution in the last decade of the Indian athlete. I grew up in an era where we were a defensive lot. I was personally a uh, darpok. Uh, the Indian athlete of today is fearless. The Indian athlete of today has the self-belief that I never did. Uh, and I'll, I could go on and say that a lot of my teammates never did. Um, but uh, I think there's a big change also in the environment that surrounds uh, Indian sport. You know, when we used to travel to the Olympic Games, we were written off even before we boarded the flight to the Olympic Games. Now a red carpet is rolled out in our send-off uh, of our teams uh, to the Olympic Games, and uh, there's a great warm welcome, whether you lose or whether you win, even when you come back. I think support to at least elite athletes is being made available more than ever. I think the Indian athlete of today has the sort of resources and support that no other athlete in the world enjoys at the elite level. But of course, I made many points 13 years ago as well, and I think many points still remain relevant to the day, um, and we still need to make progress uh, in, in many fronts, but I think the next decade or so uh, will be a decade for sport in India. Uh, we are such a young country, sport is being consumed much more by people, uh, you know, more people are playing sport, more people are watching sport. So sport is slowly but surely becoming a priority for all stakeholders. It is important to governments, it's important for you all, given the fact you have four sessions on Olympic sport at this very conclave tells me that the audience is interested uh, in, in hearing about Olympic sport. On a personal level, um, you know, uh, it's been 13 years and now that I've exited my investment of sorts, I can look back at my career far more dispassionately, and I don't really look back at my career at those medals that I won which hang on a wall, but I really look back at my career at the relationships that I was able to build with people, with my mum and my dad, for example, with my coaches, with my larger entourage, for example, and basically the sort of person I became in the process of winning that gold medal. Sport taught me a lot of things. It taught me a little bit about winning, but sport taught me how to lose. It taught me honesty, it taught me integrity, um, it taught me how to set a goal, it taught me how to deal with conflict, it taught me a lot about respect, about respecting others and finding my own self-respect, and has led, left me in good stead to deal with the larger game, the larger game of life. So one little medal, but a lot attached to it. Neeraj, where were you in 2008 when Avina Bindra won the gold medal? How many years ago? नमस्ते जी सभी को मैं बताना चाहूँगा कि मुझे सच बताऊँ तो कुछ था ही नहीं कि मैं जब तक स्पोर्ट करूँगा कि नहीं गांव में था और स्कूल में जाते थे उस टाइम पर स्पोर्ट्स का कुछ नहीं पता था तो मुझे सच बताऊँ तो उस टाइम मैं ओलंपिक को फॉलो भी नहीं कर रहा था जब मैंने शुरू किया कुछ टाइम बाद पता लगा कि अकेले इंडिविजुअल ऐसे एथलीट हैं इंडिविजुअल स्पोर्ट के जिनके पास गोल्ड है और बड़ा प्राउड फील होता था कि मतलब कि सर अकेले एक ऐसे एथलीट है और फॉलो करने के लिए हम सभी ने काफ़ी कोशिश की थी मतलब बाकी सब भी एथलीट कोशिश कर रहे हैं लेकिन कई साल से हो नहीं पा रहा था लेकिन सर का भी एक बहुत बड़ा मैंने देखा था कि ट्विटर पे पढ़ा था कि ये इनके मन से एक था कि भाई फॉलो करेंगे टोक्यो में हमको और मतलब और गोल्ड आ सकते हैं हाँ। तो वो जब जीता तो सबसे पहले तो मैंने बोला था कि मिल्खा सिंह जी का एक वो मुझे याद आई थी और सर का अकेला गोल्ड था फिर ऐसा फील हुआ था कि नहीं हमारे अंदर भी वो चीज़ है हम भी कर सकते हैं तो अब मुझे लगता है कि आने वाले टाइम में ये सिलसिला बना रहेगा तो आप सर के बारे में कब जाने बाद में जब आप फील्ड हाँ पे आए तब हाँ जब काफ़ी साल बाद जब मैंने शुरू किया जब मैं एथलेटिक्स के अलावा दूसरे स्पोर्ट्स फॉलो करने लगा तब मुझे सर के बारे में पता लगी कि अकेले हमारे ऐसे एथलीट है जिनके पास गोल्ड है तो एक बहुत ही जबरदस्त चीज़ लगती थी और आप उनसे मिले थे टोक्यो जाने से पहले नहीं मैं सर से फर्स्ट टाइम मोहाली में मिला सर है ना फर्स्ट टाइम मोहाली में मिला था मैं तो दो में एशियन गेम्स के बाद टोक्यो के बाद भी मिला टोक्यो के बाद मिलके क्या किया आपने 
سب سے پہلے تو سر نے بولا تھا کہ میں نے دس سال سے اپنے میڈل کو چھوا نہیں ہے وہ میڈل نکلوایا میں نے کیونکہ میرا بھی ٹوکیو کا میڈل میرے پاس تھا گولڈ اور سر کا بھی کیونکہ انڈیا میں دو ہی ایسے میڈل ہے تو میں نے بولا سر پلیز میں ان دونوں کو ایک بار فیل کرنا چاہتا ہوں تو سر تھوڑا ایسے لگ رہے تھے کہ یہ پسند نہیں کر رہے ہیں اس چیز کو کیونکہ سچ بتاؤں تو میری بھی ایک ایسی عادت ہے کہ میں اپنے میڈل کو ابھی رکھ دوں گا اور میں چاہتا ہوں کہ ابھی اگلے ٹارگیٹ پہ نظر رکھوں تو سر کا بھی ایسے مجھے فیل ہوا کہ ان کو وہ چیز پسند نہیں ہے کہ ایک بار جیت لیا بار بار اسی چیز کو ایسے دکھاتے رہے کہ میں نے گولڈ جیتا ہے یہ بڑے کام جو ہے میں نے دیکھا ہے بڑے کام ہیں تو میں نے بولا کہ سر پلیز آپ نکالو تو تھوڑا میں بھی سائی فیل کرتا ہوں سر مجھ سے بھی زیادہ سائی لگے مجھے کہ کہ ایسے کیسے پوز کرنا ہے میڈل کو لے کے نہیں مجھے نہیں پتا ایسے مطلب وہ کافی سائی لگ رہے تھے لیکن بہت اچھا لگا اس دن میں جب دونوں میڈل کو لے رہا تھا اور میں بول رہا تھا کہ یہ دونوں ایک دو ہی ہمارے پاس میڈل ہے انڈیا میں اور دونوں آج میرے ہاتھ میں ہیں تو بہت اچھا لگ رہا تھا اس دن لاکر میں کیا بند کر کے رکھا ہوا تھا ابھی نو نے You know, it, it, this medals and my achievements mean a lot to my parents. It left to me. I would put it in like a kitchen cabinet or something. But oh. uh, there is a room in my house which has all these things lying around. So, uh, yeah. I know you, you, you wanted me to bring it, but sorry. There was no way that I was going to bring it No, along. I, re I respect that. <laughs> I respect that. And you've given us a much larger um, sort of meaning to the medal. It's not just about that piece of metal, right? Manisha, now Neeraj has already held those two medals in his hand and you have of course been with the two athletes when they won the medals. Like they were probably the first people, you know, you talked to them when they won the medal. How are the two medals different? Well, I mean, it's really, I mean, do, comparing the two sports for starters is not really doing any justice. We have one sport where you're trying your hardest to be still, not move, not breathe, count your heartbeats and then we have another sport where you're trying to kind of move so many elements at the same time, you're running up and albeit in a very efficient manner. So it's, it's not doing justice if I compare the two. Just as the comparison between shooting and javelin are, that's the personality of these two too. So they're very, very different medals. There was, uh, um, the journeys were very, very different. Uh, one, Abhinav was in his third Olympics and uh, that medal was, was some sort of a redemption medal. It was, you know, it was the, it was always meant to be after Athens. It was, um, you know, the, the solace after so much disappointment. And it was the kind of light at the end of the tunnel. And it was a very long and dark tunnel. And, and Abhinav will, um, you know, he doesn't like to relive those days. And, and now looking back, uh, it was worth the journey, of course. But uh, during the times, it was not such a fun time. It was a time of a lot of struggle. It was a time of a lot of... Uh, um, anguish and and you know redemption was the only thing on his mind and then cut to 13 years later where we have this fellow and uh, it was his first Olympics and you know it was like okay yeah Olympics they think as a whole time but yeah throw I got madam G figure mat karo hum jare so it was very nonchalant and he's like okay let's go see what this Olympics is all about so I mean not to take away from his hard work which was completely off the charts but uh, it was a very different perspective and, and, they, and they were both very heartening in their own ways. And, and of course, the, the medal at the end makes it all, all the more special, not just for them, but for all of us. As they both said, the medal is the country's and not theirs. So it's, it's been a real privilege and an honor to be, um, you know, through the journey. Uh, uh, Manisha, I mean, what are the things that Abhinav did? You know, he, oh, sorry, sorry. Abhinav, you left no stone unturned, right, uh, in the quest for gold. Do you want to tell us some of the crazy things you did? There was a few of them. He used to call me all the time at one point and be like, okay, you know, we need to find the edge. So now you need to find me something new to try. And I need to try something new this week. So Abhinav, why don't you enlighten us? <laughs> I had forgotten about all what I did. And in preparation for this event session today I had to actually make notes and look back at my autobiography but I'll, I'll give you a few instances because you know I really try to take every vertical out of the equation in, in, in trying to prepare for the, for the games of course there's a mental side to my sport there is a physical side to my sport there's a technical side to my sport uh, and there's a tactical side to my sport so I had to break everything down into these various verticals and work on these individually 
So on the, for, for example, on the mental side, I went to South Africa and got my brain mapped. I was there in a laboratory where 32 areas of my brain, I did not even know that there were 32 areas of my brain, got mapped and, you know, I shot 3,000 shots. Uh, uh, and after 3,000 shots, we analyzed that when I was shooting well, there was a certain sort of brain activity uh, that was happening. Uh, and then through the use of science and technology, we were, we were able to recreate and get back into that mind space. Um, at that point of time, I, there was some research and I read somewhere that yak milk is very good for concentration. <laughs> so I imported liters and liters of yak milk uh, and I still have some. So if anybody's interested, call, get, me, get in touch with me after, after the session. Uh, in the test event, for example, we have a test event uh, prior to the Olympics. I recorded the whole final because the sounds of that environment uh, were going to be very similar uh, in Beijing. So I would visualize in samadhi tanks, these are flotation tanks where you have 1,000 kgs of Epsom salt and you lie weightless, and I would visualize and plan what sort of a thought process I would have and link it to every announcement that was going to be made in that day on that Olympic final. I had very bad eyes uh, as an athlete, and I was a shooter and needed good eyes, but my strength was to um, really was on the kinesthetic sense. So I would really base my performance on feeling. So I needed to improve on that area. So I used to train in dark rooms where I couldn't see anything, but that enhanced my sense of feeling, uh, for example. Um, I worked with a deep sea diver to learn breathing techniques, to, to learn how to, uh, to uh, get calm and get calm quite quickly in 15 seconds because that was what my sport was all about. On the physical side, I was, uh, I started off, I got into the sport of shooting because it did not involve movement. I was this little overweight kid who hated to move, so shooting was the best fit. But to be successful in it, I also had to get good at it and I had to be physically fit. I used to run 10 kilometers five times a week because shooting is all about shooting in between heartbeats. So I had to have a very good cardiovascular uh, 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 system. I worked a lot on strength training. Manisha, do you remember we were in Australia yeah. <laughs> uh, one January uh, of, of, this, of that summer, and we were, I was training with a sailor. Can you tell who was it, the geeky shooter who was lifting more weights, or was it your sailor? <laughs> no, it was the geeky shooter. But yeah, the same so. trip of Australia, we used to run to this clinic every day. And I was jet lagged, and I, I mean, after running 10 kilometers, he was fine. And I used to sleep the whole day. One time I even missed dinner because I slept from one morning to the next. <laughs> yeah, so then I went to a sports dentist. I didn't even know sports oh, yeah, dentists uh, oh. exist. Uh, and, you know, I used to wear a denture. As a 20-year-old boy, I used to wear dentures because wearing that brace helped me get better range of motion in my neck. And that was something which was very important uh, in my sport. Um, I used to climb mountains. And, you know, one of my coaches used to take me hiking for five, five hours. And that was something which really helped me. It helped me stay in the moment, one shot at a time, because it was one step at the moment for this unfit kid who had to climb these mountains. In Australia, you know, uh, because I was a little overweight, uh, I was trying to get the best com body composition meant for my sport, and I was struggling a little bit with my love handles. And all what I did to uh, uh, lose weight, I lost weight everywhere else, but those love handles never went. <laughs> so I got my love handles lasered off yeah, I remember uh, in Australia oh my God. Uh, to, to get that yeah. best uh, body composition. On the technical side, uh, you know, we talked about Athens, and there was a problem with the floor, so I got the shoes of my, uh, the, the sole of my shoes uh, uh, sold with rubber which was used in Ferrari tires, because at that point of time they had the best anti-skid properties uh, at that point of time. What else did I do? At that point of time, my best two best friends was a mochi and a carpenter, and I have great relationships with these two people because the mochi helped me with my shooting jacket to get the best fit, uh, and this carpenter who I got from Turkmenistan helped me get the best grip on my, on my, on my gun. Ammunition, very important to have the perfect ammunition. He's not ammunition. an OCD guy, I promise <laughs> no. you. The <laughs> this is, this is a good long. story. Uh, ammunition was something which was very important. At that time, point of time, the Chinese used to manufacture the best ammunition, but of course they didn't sell it to anybody else. So I got a friend in Hong Kong to buy me 10,000 rounds. We packed it in different uh, branded packages, and I had to smuggle it back into the country. So I had to also become a smuggler of sorts. Don't put me in jail now, but I, I, I did that. Um, on the tactical side, uh, also a lot of things that were done. I went on a commando course to find courage and learn something about uh, dealing with uh, uh, adrenaline and, and finding confidence. I, I worked with a, 
a ski jumper to work on how I would walk in because uh, ski jumpers require a lot of balance. So they taught me how to walk to, to activate very various parts of my body. Um, I, had a, I used to carry a pocket mirror everywhere because I used to carry a lot of facial tension. So every half an hour or so during courses of my career, I used to see myself, oh, get this pocket mirror out and see myself and <laughs> relax my facial tension. And just to end, and I'm sorry I've taken a little while, the most important thing in preparation for Beijing was I had to have a tactical preparation on how to avoid the media because that was very important. <laughs> uh, so you know what I did? I carried a book to Beijing and every time a media person kind of approach me, I would open this book and get really interested in my reading. And till date, I don't even know the title of that book. <laughs> uh, so, Neeraj bahut papad belne pade the for this. <laughs> so that's a long list. If anyone thought gold medals are easy, they're not. I mean, you've just been through that. Neeraj, aapne kya kiya? No, he can't match that. I'm sorry. There's no way. I don't know how much I am. अगर कोच के साथ अगर मैं जिस कोच पे बिलीव अगर मुझे ये बोल देगा ना कि छत से कूद जाते इतनी ज़्यादा थ्रो चली जाएगी तो मैं बोलता हूँ कि मैं छत से भी कूद जाऊँगा मतलब जितना कोच वर्कआउट बोलता है वो मैं कभी भी अगर उस समय से छोड़ देता हूँ मान लो चाहे चाहे एक एक रेपटेशन मैंने छोड़ दिया तो मुझे इतनी गिल्टी फील होती है कि मैंने बहुत बड़ा गुनाह कर दिया आज तो मैं वो वर्कआउट कभी नहीं छोड़ता क्या आपका हेयर स्टाइल आप कहोगे कि आपके टैलेंट को हेल्प करता है क्योंकि काफ़ी टाइम के लिए आपने एक नहीं हेल्प तो नहीं करता मैम ये आंखों प्यारे थे मैंने इसलिए कटवाए थे ओलंपिक से पहले मैंने अच्छा। सोचा कि यार कभी कुछ गड़बड़ होगी ना बोलेंगे कि फुकरा हो रहा था लंबे बाल करके चला गया वहाँ पे <laughs> <laughs> तो मैंने सोचा कि पहले इनको क्योंकि वो दो तीन कंपटीशन मैंने कैप वगैरह डाला था और बंडाना भी डाला था तो कुछ भी काम निकल रहा था वो थ्रो में जब हम ला, लास्ट अटैक करते हैं तो वो कैप भी निकल रहा था सब कुछ वो निकल के पसीना फेस पे आ रहा था पूरा बाल भी फेस पे आ रहे थे तो उनकी तरफ ज़्यादा ध्यान देना पड़ता है कॉन्सेंट्रेट फिफ्टी परसेंट बालों की तरफ जाता था कई बार तो मैंने सोचा कि इनको कटवा देते हैं पूरा ध्यान इस पे ये तो घर की खेती है दोबारा फिर रुक जाएंगे ऑन दिस एग्जैक्ट डे नीरज मित्र को बोल रही थी ये पोर्चुगल में था मैं बोल रही थी चल मेरे साथ हेयर कट के लिए बोला नहीं 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 नहीं, नहीं मेरे बाल अभी अच्छे देख रहे हैं फिर लोगों ने उनके लिए जुल्फे वाले गाने भी तो गाए ना मनीषा Well, I mean, I, I think that you know we all bask in this glory of the gold medals, and most of us only see these gold medals. And um, some of us, like me, come see the back, and they come at a price, and that's quite a heavy price. It's not always easy. Um, the journey is not always easy. The the pain that that you know that is behind this, and the blood, and the sweat, and the tears, and there is a lot of it. Believe me when I tell you that. Neeraj, आपको कैसे लगता है कि आपको कितना डिफिकल्ट लगा जो आप सर्जरी आपको सर्जरी करना पड़ा और फिर वो सर्जरी के बाद ओलंपिक्स बहुत पास आ रहे थे तो आपको क्या लगता है आपको वो जर्नी जो आप हॉस्पिटल बेड से लेके बिल्कुल पीबी तक कितना डिफिकल्ट था आपके लिए मैं मानता हूँ कि मैम जो सर्जरी के बाद नहीं बिल्कुल जब बिल्कुल बेड रेस्ट बोला था तब ज़्यादा प्रॉब्लम हुई थी क्योंकि ऐसा लग रहा था कि कुछ कुछ है ही नहीं करने को लेकिन जब मेरी ट्रेनिंग शुरू हुई डॉक्टर ने बोल दिया था कि एक वीक बाद के आप थोड़ा ट्रेनिंग वगैरह साइकिलिंग वगैरह शुरू कर सकते हो तो मैंने सोचा कि मेरी पूरी ट्रेनिंग शुरू हो गई अभी तो मैंने पहले दिन ही हाफ एन आवर फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स पूरा तेज साइकिल चला दिया तो वो पूरा जो मेरे टांके थे वो गल गए थे क्योंकि मैंने बहुत ज़्यादा ट्रेनिंग कर दी थी ऐसे उन्होंने सिर्फ ऐसे बोला था कि आप फिटनेस थोड़ा शुरू कर सकते क्योंकि उनको लग रहा था कि मैं बहुत ज़्यादा मेरा मन है जब दोबारा करने का शुरू प्रैक्टिस तो उन्होंने थोड़ी मुझे छूट दे दी तो मैंने पूरा ही पेल दिया फिर पूरा साइकिलिंग साइकिलिंग तो फिर डॉक्टर के पास गया बोले यार तूने ये क्या कर दिया पूरा वो टांके वगैरह गल गए थे फिर मुझे दस पंद्रह दिन का पूरा बेड रेस्ट दिया दोबारा तो वो टाइम बहुत मुश्किल था लेकिन मैं मानता हूँ कि जब मेरी ट्रेनिंग शुरू हो जाए मतलब मेरे पास हो कुछ करने को कि मैं दोबारा जिम जा रहा हूँ या कुछ कर रहा हूँ तो तब मुझे इतना प्रॉब्लम नहीं हुई मैम लेकिन जब पूरा बेड रेस्ट दिया था जब ज़्यादा दिक्कत हो रही थी एक आधी बार बुरा जब लगता था कि जब सभी एथलीट्स खेल रहे थे और पता नहीं ऐसा मुझे लगता है कि होता है कि जिस जहाँ पे मैं नहीं खेलता हूँ वहाँ पे मेडल बहुत कम में आता है दोहा वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप हुई थी उधर 86 सिक्स कुछ में गोल्ड गया सभी डायमंड लीग्स में 2019 में सभी में 83 84 मीटर में गोल्ड जा रहे थे तो मुझे ऐसा फील हो रहा था यार मैं नहीं खेल रहा हूँ तो सभी इतना मतलब ऐसा रिजल्ट आ रहा है और मैं जब खेलता हूँ तो मेरे पर्सनल बेस्ट भी करता हूँ तब भी मैं फोर्थ आता था कई बार तो फर्स्ट टाइम हिस्ट्री में ऐसा हुआ था जब मैं दोहा डायमंड लीग खेल रहा था कि मैंने टी सेवन पॉइंट फोर थ्री मीटर लगाया कॉमनवेल्थ से आने के बाद और वो मेरा पर्सनल बेस्ट था मैं सोच रहा था कि ये मेरा 
डायमंड लीग में पोजीशन हो सकती है अभी फर्स्ट टाइम लेकिन फर्स्ट टाइम इस टाइम ऐसा हुआ तीनों थ्रोअर्स ने 90 से ऊपर फेंक दिया बका यार क्या हो रहा है तो उस टाइम थोड़ा सा ऐसा लगता था कि यार इस साल नहीं हो रहा लेकिन मन में ये बात थी कि नहीं अभी कम बहुत अच्छे से करना है इंस्पायर इंस्टीट्यूट में मैंने काफ़ी अच्छी वो अपना रिहेब किया फीजो द साथ में सभी जे की पूरी सपोर्ट थी और वहाँ पे स्ट्रेंथ ट्रेनिंग कंडीशनिंग के और डाइट मतलब डाइट वगैरह के लिए काफ़ी ध्यान रखने के लिए थे तो दिमाग में एक ही चीज़ थी अगर कम बैक करना है ना क्योंकि मैं बीच में मेरे दिमाग में आया था कि मैं एक कंपटीशन खेल लेता हूँ लेकिन दिमाग में एक ही चीज़ थी कि कम बैक करना है ना तो ऐसा करना है कि पता लगे कि दोबारा से मैं वही वही पे जहाँ से मैं इंजरी में आया था वही मेरी परफॉर्मेंस ऐसा नहीं था कि मैं 88 मेरा बेस्ट है तो मैं 79 या 80 मीटर से शुरू करूं तब तो मैंने जब पहला कंपटीशन खेला था 2020 में तो सीधा मैंने ओलंपिक क्वालिफाई किया था मेरी सेकंड बेस्ट थ्रो के साथ तो वो जब ट्रेनिंग शुरू हुई तो मैं बिल्कुल ठीक हो गया था जैसा कि मैम बोल रहे हैं कि वो थोड़ा मुश्किल था टाइम दिमाग के लिए लेकिन जब फिजिकल ट्रेनिंग मेरी होती है तो उसमें अपने आप मेंटली और मैं फिजिकली स्ट्रॉन्ग हो जाता हूँ मगर तब आपके लिए एक नया भी कोच भी आया था तो वो आपको ऐसे नहीं लगा कि कोई डाउट नहीं आया कि जैसे अभी अब मैं मैं कोच चेंज कर रहा हूँ अभी ये कितना क्रिटिकल पीरियड है मुझे तो लगा था मैंने तो बोला नहीं 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 हम यू नो दैट लेट्स गेट हिम अ सुपर स्टार एस्टेब्लिश कोच एंड ही वाज वेरी वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट इन थिंक दैट ही डिड अ गुड जॉब यू नो इन हाइंड साइट विद क्लाउस नहीं बहुत अच्छा रहा मैम क्योंकि वो एक मैं सच बताऊँ तो मुझे बहुत ज़्यादा कई बार ट्रेनिंग में सीरियस रहना पसंद नहीं है तो वो बहुत फनी है तो कुछ ना कुछ वो मजाक करते रहते हैं ट्रेनिंग में कई बार अगर सीरियस भी है तो वो थोड़ा मजाक मजाक में करवा देते हैं कहीं कोच ऐसे होते हैं कि पीछे डंडा ले खड़े होके कि नहीं करिए तो वो मजाक मजाक में ऐसे करके फिर भी ट्रेनिंग करवा देते हैं तो वो कहीं ना कहीं उनका और एक जो ट्रस्ट होता है कोच के ऊपर वो उन्होंने बहुत जल्दी बना लिया था क्योंकि हमारी बॉन्डिंग जो है बहुत अच्छी रही तो उसकी वजह से उनकी जो ट्रेनिंग प्लान है और जो भी हमारा पूरा टीम वर्क है वो बहुत अच्छे से चला तो दोबारा फिर कोशिश करेंगे मैम कि अगले साल जो आने वाले और नेक्स्ट ओलंपिक में उनके साथ और अच्छी ट्रेनिंग करके अपना जो नेक्स्ट टारगेट है उसको करेंगे कंप्लीट। अलीना, यू यू वेंट थ्रू सम वेरी पेनफुल इंजरीज वेल, एंड वर इन रिहाब फॉर ऑलमोस्ट एट मंथ्स, राइट? कैन टॉक टू अस अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट दैट एंड हाउ यू ओवरकेम इट। I think uh, I had many dark moments in my career as well. I had injuries as well, but I think uh, the darkest of places where I went was in my mind. Uh, you know, I was an athlete who always struggled with self-belief, which I talked about a little bit. Uh, I was in a very lonely sport, uh, but I always had a constant companion, and my constant companion through through the 22 years in sport was self-doubt. Uh, you know, I was always assailed by a lot of anxiety. Uh, you know, my stretching pre-competition stretching routine was uh, uh, changed with a um, with a runny tummy and dealing with my runny tummy and some nervous vomits. Uh, oh. But uh, that was what it was all about. I tried a lot to to work on 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 gaining confidence. I never really gained confidence and worked with a lot of psychologists, this, that, and the other, and then. I just gave up on that, uh, and then instead of chasing uh, self-belief, what I really started to do was try to chase self-respect, uh, and that really came. That is probably the reason why I did all those uh, crazy things because I wanted to put everything into uh, my endeavor. I wanted to put everything into uh, the preparation, um, and it was about looking myself into the mirror uh, every every night before I went to bed and ask myself the difficult question: Have I put in my best foot? forward have i done my best and when the answer was yes i always had a good night sleep i learned that hard work is the best possible sedative that you can possibly get um, you know before i boarded my flight to beijing again i asked myself this question have i done my best in the course of the last 4 years to do everything i humanly possibly could to prepare for the olympics and the answer was yes i couldn't have done anything better and there i was a winner i was a winner even before i shot the first shot at the olympic games in beijing because i was a winner in my own eyes and i think that was uh, the brightest medal of all that i ever won well i mean just everybody should know that he was supposed to be in official practice in beijing and i'm walking in the mall and he's like oh i'm coming with you i said but you're supposed to be in practice he's like no there's nothing left to practice so the next day was his competition everybody's in pre competition training and abhinav and me were walking through the mall they they both like malls supposedly that funny story if you want me to tell about my pre no 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 Wait, i want to actually really get into this because this is something that that is so front and center right now but now when i look back 
you were one of the first athletes to talk about mental health and, and talk about how much uh, anguish and how difficult it is on your mind. And I think this is something that anybody uh, today who has a high stress, high performance job can deal with. How do you get to that point where, you know, where you get under so much duress that your body actually shuts down. And, you know, it's happening to Simone Biles, it's happening to Osaka, it happened to Phelps. So how, what, are, what would be your suggestions to get through that? Well, firstly, I think there's a great misconception in the world of sport that athletes are immune to any kind of mental health issues or mental illnesses, and they are mentally very strong. But on the contrary, I think an athlete's journey has far more pain points and triggers that can potentially lead to mental health issues. You know, it's all, it's all about dealing with constant failure. It's about dealing with success. It's the physiological stress of, of just training, which can uh, lead to mental health issues. It's constant travel, lack of sleep, the pressures of competition, the injuries are very hard moments, the impending end of a career, the transition out of sport is very, very difficult. But, you know, as athletes and the larger ecosystem and, and the sports industry, and I particularly and uh, consciously use the word sports industry, uh, places a lot of emphasis on, on, on outcomes. And as athletes, we are guilty, and I was equally guilty, of believing in an equation that a gold medal equals happiness. But on the contrary, we have to work to making happiness our gold medal. And if we are able to yeah. do that, I think we will be able to achieve and sustain success much, much uh, more. So I think this is an area where I think uh, it's not just about educating athletes, but also the larger ecosystem to work to create um, psychologically safe environments from ath for athletes. And I think it's very important in the world of Indian sport because, you know, over the course of the next decade will be a decade for Indian sport, for sport. That means many more Indians and young children, young kids will take up sport. What that will also mean is that many Indians will also fail in sport in India because that is the very nature of sport. And we all have a collective responsibility to create enabling environments. We have a, a, a responsibility to create a dual career pathways for athletes as well, which will help them in their post career, but I'm quite confident that will also help them perform under pressure much more because then they've built different identities and they're not going to, their self-worth is not going to be determined on where their name appears on the ranking list of a sporting competition. Before I move to Neeraj Abhinav, do you still have self-doubt? Yes, at times. I mean, uh, w working for this little session, I was very nervous, so uh, <laughs> that stays. But I, but I learned to accept it, I learned to deal with it, I have better coping strategies, but uh, uh, that, that is, I'm always a work in progress. You want to share some of your coping strategies with a larger audience because, you know, um, stressful situations or a moment that you need to perform is there for everybody. Maybe not at a gold medal level, but... I think acceptance. I think uh, whenever we are uh, uh, in a difficult and sticky situation which pushes us out of our comfort zone, as human beings we resist those situations. Just accept it. I accepted it. I have to be here this morning and I have to try and do a good <laughs> job of entertaining you. So it's made my life a little bit simpler. So it is about acceptance. Just, but it is a way of life. You have to, it's not just you use it in a, a stressful situation. And also gratitude. I think we take life for granted and we're always hoping and thinking about things we don't have. Uh, but we forget about all the stuff we presently have. So practicing gratitude and acceptance, I think, helps. Neeraj, have you ever had self-doubt that I'm going to the field and I'm body shut down, I won't be able to fake it? No, I mean, I mean, I'm going to take a fake it, I'm going to take a look at something that I don't want to do today. I mean, in the Olympics, I mean, I don't want to take a look at something that I don't want to do today, but I don't want to take a look at something that I don't want to do today. I mean, I'm going to take a look at something that I don't want to do today. I mean, I'm going to take a look at something that I don't want to do today. I'm going to take a look at something that I don't want to do today. कई बार होता है कि हाँ तैयारी इतनी अच्छी नहीं होती है हम फिट नहीं होते हैं पूरे पर फिर भी मैं ज़्यादा डिस्टेंस पे कंसंट्रेट नहीं करता मैं सोचता हूँ कि बस जितना मेरे अंदर जो भी आज जितनी स्ट्रेंथ है या जो भी मेरी तैयारी है वो मैं उसका हंड्रेड परसेंट दूँ बस तो ऐसा होता है और कभी कभी बिल्कुल मैम बोल रहे हैं लेकिन कभी कभी हो जाता है जब तैयारी अच्छी ना हो तो Oh, वैसे नॉर्मली कभी ऐसा कुछ फील नहीं होता। He represents the new age Indian athlete, so he has belief. So that's, no, that's the evolution. But that's absolutely true. The the younger generation of Indian athletes, the amount of self confidence and self belief they have is unbelievable. And they walk around with the chip on the shoulder, and they believe that they are just at par, or if not better than everybody else. And that is what 
I think will be the, the best thing that happens to Indian sport in this next decade. Well, Manisha, isn't it also that Abhinav has to internalize all the emotions and be very still? He, he can't have anything move. And Neeraj is like taking all those emotions and throwing it out, right? Yeah. So it, it, they're very different sports, and they're sports that, that require s such a gamut of different kind of training and different, I mean, it's, the whole nature of it is completely different. It's, it's, it's really, it's not fair to compare the two. I mean, it's, it's no, if you equally see, hard. Yeah, they're I mean, if you hard. see, okay, like, Abhinav, now tell your story. The night before the Olympics, though, how, what were you doing? Were you nervous? Of course. Was, uh, you know, my, my sporting event is equated to a controlled panic attack. Uh, and then you have to make uh, sense and find calm amongst chaos. But uh, you want to tell the story. The, so, you know, when, before I boarded my flight to uh, uh, Beijing, I was in Munich. And, um, you know, I was checking out of my hotel, packing my stuff. And um, I looked at the mini bar. And I was not really a big drinker of sorts. And I looked back, looked, opened my mini bar, and I saw uh, two little miniature bottles of Jack Daniels. And for whatever reason, I packed it in my toilet kit. And the night before my Olympic final, I was nervous. I couldn't sleep. I was about to die. I thought back to my Jack Daniels. And I went to my toilet kit and opened these two bottles of Jack, miniatures of Jack Daniels. And I drank them. And next day, gold medal. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. That's an easy tip for everyone to follow, I, I, I think. I was armed with self-respect. And I was armed with self-respect. And I was armed with Jack Daniels. Who the hell could beat me on that day? Neeraj, you have tried something like this. I mean, the other athletes don't need suitors, they will need to make a technique. They are getting a gold from Jack Daniels. But everyone is different. I mean, I believe that the shooting is very mentally very different. It is a game and it is very much needed. It is a lot of mental strength. It is also needed because we have to be physically fit. But when we are in the Olympic Games, we are in the ground. Then we are also physically delayed. We are down down. But we are not mentally strong. So, it's a completely different sport, as I said, but I tried to try a shooting, but I need a lot of control. I mean, I didn't have to do it. First, two or three times, I was looking at where I was going, and I was looking at where I was going. No, I was, I was, I mean, I was a nervous wreck, and I usually am. So, before, before his, Neeraj's final, I was calling his coach non-stop. So, I don't really talk to the athlete, and this time I was sitting in Delhi. So, I must have called the coach about 50 times, and then at 3 o'clock in the morning, on the morning of the final, the Klaus sends me a message saying, our baby slept well, now the chicken must fly. So, and it, it surely flew. Neeraj, when the competition started, you told me that you only had two or three practice throws. You were so confident from now. What was happening in the news? There was a lot of heat in Tokyo. And बार यूरोपियन एथलीट्स के और बाकी एथलीट्स की क्या आदत है कि वो डेढ़ दो घंटा पहले थोड़ा थोड़ा वो मुफ्त शुरू कर देते हैं और मैं वहाँ पे जाके लेट गया आराम से बिल्कुल आधा घंटा बचा जब कॉल रूम में जाने से पहले तो कोच मेरे से गुस्सा हो रहा है कि क्या कर रहा है तो मैं कोच को बोल रहा था कि वार्म अप हम अपने तरीके से करें क्योंकि जो क्वालिफिकेशन राउंड था उसमें हमने बहुत जल्दी वार्म अप शुरू कर दिया था और वहाँ पर ही बार इतना ज़्यादा पसीना आ गया हमको कि अंदर के लिए ऐसा लग रहा था कि एनर्जी है ही नहीं तो आराम से मैं आराम से लेटा हुआ है कोच ऐसे कोच मेरे से ज़्यादा कोच कोच में जोश था वहाँ पे क्या कर रहा है तो यहाँ पे सभी एथलीट वो कर रहे हैं और सभी रेडी हैं वहाँ पे जाने के लिए पर मेरे दिमाग में ये था कि नहीं आराम से करना है और यहाँ पे ज़्यादा जोर नहीं लगाना है जो असली चीज़ है वो अंदर है मतलब बाहर जब हम वॉमअप कर रहे थे वहाँ पर मैंने दो तीन थ्रो किए और कोच भी उसमें खुश था मैं भी खुश था वहाँ बस अंदर करना है पूरा तोड़ जो भी करना है तो अंदर जाके फिर पूरा अपना हंड्रेड परसेंट लगा दिया और बिल्कुल पहले थ्रो से बहुत अच्छा रहा They so know these what are two doing. very good tips, Manisha. One, Jack Daniels. Second, sleep. Yeah. Both are very doable, guys, before yeah. a high performance event. Yeah. Um, Manisha, what about what the athletes do to decompress? You want to tell us a little bit about that and maybe then throw it to both of them to see what is it that they do? Yeah, that was interesting. And so, Anita just been on his decompression since, uh, what, August 7th? August yeah, 8th? August 7th, javelin day. Yeah, yeah, but 8th, no? The, the actual day doesn't count as decompression. So okay. he's been uh, modeling and, you know, doing the most important therapy, retail therapy, driving, test driving fast cars. I hope he doesn't, which I hope he doesn't buy, but anyway. And that's important. I think that that is a way um, for an athlete to reset their mind and, and kind of, you know, get back um, to, to, you know, easing out all the pressure and some, somehow, like, flushing out all the 
the toxins of your body. Um, Abhinav, what did you do to decompress? It was completely different when he came back from, uh, from uh, Beijing. Mine was, wasn't so happening. I went on a Vipassana meditation course <laughs> in hot and not so interesting Sona village. Um, but it helped me because uh, I was lost uh, and I just needed time. I needed time with myself. You know, I had lots of invitations for conclaves and this, that and the other. I just needed to be alone and left uh, alone. And that was really useful for me because it, it, it taught me I was supposed to meditate and I was lost because I didn't really know what I wanted to do in life again. I'd achieved my goal and there was this huge void uh, and I actually wanted to quit sport and, and move ahead. Um, but I went to this meditation course where you have to meditate 10 hours a day with a goal that I have to find my new calling in life. So I go to this meditation course and all I did for 10 days was think back to my sport, think back to how I could get better. And that taught me something that I loved the process of what I did. And that just energized me to get back and get back to it and, and decompress and come back with renewed energy. So sometimes you get that energy in the strangest of places. So, ये जो आप shopping trip हो कर आए थे दुबई में सिद्धि, can we have those photos back? थोड़ा उसके बारे में बताएं, उसके वजह से आपके toxin सारे release हो गए हैं आप? नहीं shopping की तो मैं आदत है मुझे पहले सीमित लगाया था नहीं है कि अभी करने लगाऊं, चाहे वो मैंने जब sports शुरू किया, चाहे मुझे एक जुराब की जोड़ी खरीदनी होती थी, लेकिन उस टाइम पैसे के हिसाब से, अभी है कि ये भी हाँ एयर जोड़न वगैरह ले लेता हूँ या दूसरे कोई सूज पसंद आते हैं। पांच एयर जोड़न, let's be clear, not एक एयर जोड़न। नहीं पर अच्छा लगता है मैम थोड़ा उधर गए हम क्योंकि काफी ज़्यादा यहाँ पे जब आए थे ओलंपिक फ्रेश हुए और अभी फिर दोबारा से ट्रेनिंग शुरू करनी है तो काफी अच्छा आज थोड़ा अजीब लग रहा है वैसे मुझे क्योंकि इतने दिन मैं छुट्टी करके यहाँ पे आते ही कल कल ही आया हम और यहाँ पे आते आज इसमें जैसे सर बता रहे थे कि थोड़ा नर्वस फील हो रहे थे तो मेरा भी बीच में तो आदत होगी थी कि लगातार इंटरव्यूज वगैरह चल रहे थे आज मैं भी थोड़ा सा अजीब सा फील कर रहा था लेकिन अभी थोड़ा नॉर्मल हुआ हूँ Manisha, this is very good. Yeah, please send me also for a holiday to Dubai after the conclave. It seems to work for decompression. If Neeraj has left any stuff to buy there. So they say that it takes a whole village um, to raise a champion, right? Um, दूसरे लोगों का क्या रोल रहता है? आपके parents या आपके friends या आपके coach उसमें आप उनके साथ आप क्या relationship रखते हैं कि आप best perform कर पाएं? ऐसे कहते हैं कि coach मिलना एक soulmate के जैसे होता है। ये क्या true बात है आपके और Klaus के बीच में? हाँ मैं Klaus coach के साथ तो काफी अच्छा मतलब हमारे बनती है बहुत अच्छी। लेकिन मैं कहना चाहूँगा कि family का भी बहुत ज़्यादा एक role रहता है क्योंकि family मैं लकी मानता हूँ कि उन्होंने कभी मुझे performance का कभी pressure नहीं दिया कि जब मैंने शुरू किया था कि medal क्यों नहीं आ रहे हैं या फिर कई बार होता है कि आजकल बहुत जल्दी performance आते हैं parents भी और athletes भी कई बार तो मुझे लगता है कि वो patience बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है उसके लिए और कहीं ना कहीं ये बहुत अच्छा रहा कि जो हमारे आसपास के लोग हैं वो बहुत हमको पॉजिटिव रखने वाले होने चाहिए तो वो मैं बहुत अच्छा मानता हूँ कि मेरे आसपास के लोग काफी अच्छे रहे हैं पूरी टीम भी और फैमिली से भी और फ्रेंड्स भी जो भी हैं सभी स्पोर्टी थे तो ये बहुत ज़्यादा मुझे a uh, larger entourage in my preparation for Beijing. I had nine people who I was working with, and that was made me become a manager of sorts as well, because some of these people didn't get along with each other. Okay. Uh, so I had to set different uh, timings for people so that they didn't kill each other and uh, they didn't make face contact. But there was also a coach who I did not get along with, um, because he kept telling me things I did not want to hear. But I saw immense value in that relationship and kept going with him for many, many years. Uh, 95% of the things I didn't listen to him, but the 5% which did stick were perhaps the most uh, valuable things that uh, I could tell. Uh, Neeraj talks about family, and I'll just uh, uh, tell you one little anecdote uh, with my mother. Uh, this happened in the 2004 Olympic Games where I had this most crushing loss uh, that I could ever have, and five minutes after this uh, Olympic final where my world had come uh, breaking down, I met my mother, and she said, you know, the most you could do today was win a bronze medal or a silver medal, but you're going to go and win a gold medal, and you're going to win it in four years' time. So that taught me something, never argue with a mother's instinct. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
Um, Avina, you are 13 years ahead of Neeraj. Any advice to him as an Olympic veteran? We are running out of time, so I'm going to skip through uh, some of the questions uh, yes, quickly. Uh, Neeraj, I want to give you advice that uh, you have know, goal to achieve your goal, but I think you, can, you have the potential to be one of our greatest athletes of all time, and you can only do that when you achieve your fullest potential. So respect your passion. Respect your passion. You have to find a good relationship with your uh, pa passion. You have to make a balance banana bada zaruri hai with your sport. You have to respect it by giving it enough. It is, it is with your sport, it's always almost like a relationship as you have with your girlfriend. Not too far, but not too close. So respect your pra passion. Make the process the gold medal. Or agar aap ye kare, to I'm sure uh, you have many more gold medals ahead of you. So, Avina, talking about Neeraj being a role model, I'm role, role model we'll see as he moves through life. But model to aap bani gaye hai, na? Ye dekhe aapke Louis Vuitton wale photos. Acha, piche chal raha hai, sab kuch humko dekhi nira hai. Neeraj, aap bhi, Abhinav, aapko kuch advice dijiye? Abhi, sir ko to mein kya advice doji? Matlab, in ko dekhe to hum inspire ho rahe hai. To, mein yehi bolo ha, ki aap hume aise inspire karte rahi hai, sir. Aur, क्योंकि सर का मुझे पता है कि थोड़े से साई है वैसे मैं बोल देता कि सर सोशल मीडिया में थोड़ा एक्टिव रही है आप थोड़ा अपने अपने बारे में बताते रहिए लोगों को लेकिन जैसे सर वैसे ठीक है मैं मनीषा मैडम मुझे बता रही थी कि आपका सोशल मीडिया की वैल्यूएशन 450 करोड़ की है तो मेरे भी दिलवा दो मैं अभी पासवर्ड दे देता हूं सर वो भी कईयों को धोखा लगा हुआ है वो 450 करोड़ सोच रहे हैं कि नीरज ने इतने कमाए लिए हैं वो लोग उल्टा लेके जा रहे हैं उसको नो बट ही इज द सेल्फ प्रोक्लेम्ड मास्टर ऑफ रील्स बाय द वे ही सेड मेरे जैसे कोई नहीं रील बनाता है मैडम जी आप ढूंढ के देख रहे हो प्रोफेशनल मुझे नहीं चाहिए मैं खुद सबसे अच्छी रील बनाता हूं सिद्धि लेट्स सी वन ऑफ नीरजस लेटेस्ट इंस्टाग्राम पोस्ट्स आई एम श्योर वी हैव अ रील इट्स द ओ या the underwater javelin throw new sport in olympics neeraj to aap is session ka ek reel banayenge kyunki hamari conclave ki team aapke jaise to itna acha reel nahi bana sakti na nahi ma'am wo free time mein main training ki videos dekhta rehta hu apni sabse zyada main मोबाइल में बार बार चाहे मुझे जब फ्लाइट में बैठता हूँ कभी भी मैं अपनी ट्रेनिंग की वीडियोस या ऐसे वो देखना बहुत पसंद है तो मैं फिर उनको क्रॉप कर करके मैं उनमें म्यूजिक डाल के वो मुझे अच्छा लगता है मतलब दिमाग में वही चीज़ रहती है ट्रेनिंग और जब उनके बारे में सोचता रहता हूँ तो वो जब वही चीज़ है ना तो कोई शिद्दत से करे कोई चीज़ अच्छी लगती है अच्छी बनती है वो तो इसलिए थोड़ा वो ठीक होती है सेशन की मैम देख लूँगा कैसा सब कुछ रहेगा मैडम बना दे बना दे नीरज पता है तुम्हारे इंस्टाग्राम फॉलोअर्स बढ़ भी जाए पता नहीं दो गोल्ड मेडल एक साथ ठीक है मैम वो एक सोशल मीडिया एक अलग चीज़ है पर ठीक वो इतना मतलब मैं उसको बहुत ज़्यादा जरूरी भी नहीं मानता हूँ उतना सबसे ज़्यादा जरूरी तो अपना स्पोर्ट्स ही है मतलब उस पर ज़्यादा फोकस है वो इतना मैं उस पर ध्यान नहीं देता हूँ वो कभी कभी बना लेता हूँ ऐसा नहीं है कि मैं उसी के ऊपर फ्री टाइम में पूरा और रील्स बनाने पर लगाता हूँ थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑल थ्री ऑफ यू ओलम्पियंस यू हैव बीन अमेजिंग and it's been a phenomenal session to learn from you i think some of the tips go way above just applying to sports people applies to any one of us who has been through a high performance situation or wants to achieve a goal or has had uh, a touch of nerves and uh, thank you very much uh, behind the scenes we will obviously be making a reel so you look out for it on social media of neeraj and in the india today group handles later in the day thank you very much